Welcome back to Louisiana. I am Samuel and today we're gonna to be doing a little project. So uh, you know that you might have heard of this thing called EDC, it stands for Everyday Carry, and it's these people who uh, think they need to carry everything in their pockets with them that they might need throughout the day. You know, they might carry their knife in their pocket, they might carry a flashlight and all this other stuff. You know, you have multi-tools and all this specialized equipment. And I've never really seen the actual value of it. You know, I carry a knife with me every day, but you know what, hey, come on, I live on a farm, you know, I cut a lot of stuff, and it's something I use a lot. But other than that, I just don't see the importance of carrying something with you that's gonna weigh you down even more. But I have heard of this thing that's becoming quite popular. Uh, it's known as a mini pry bar. And normally when I think of a pry bar, I think something, you know, it's about three feet long, made out of iron, and you can really rip up some stuff with it. And then there's a little about, you know, just little tiny three inch things that go in your pocket or on your keychain. And I just don't see the value of them. They're about $40 on Amazon and uh, I think that's a total rip off. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go out, I'm going to grab me a chunk of steel. I'm going to see if I can make one and then we're going to test it. We're going to carry it for a day and we're going to see just how useful this thing is. I'm thinking it's not going to be very useful, but hey, I might be proven wrong. Uh, so I'm, I'm open to, uh, to see what actually happens here, but let's go find out what happens. So here's the beginnings of our uh, EDC pry bar project, and it's this dirty old piece of steel. And uh, right now it doesn't look like a whole lot of uh, excitement going on right here, but we should be able to clean it up and turn it into a pretty nice uh, little pry bar that you can carry around with you every day. So you know you can see you've got some nice steel over here, and uh, we can whack off a little piece. And I think it should be just about right, and hopefully this will work pretty good. And here's a squared up piece of steel that came into that little dirty chunk. So uh, the first uh, course of action here is to start getting a little angle grinded into here. So we're going to use this uh, disc sander to start cutting some metal off of there. So starting off with a uh, disc sander and we only cut that much. Uh, it's going a little slow. So this time we're going to bring out the... Uh and there you can see the uh, angle grinder did a pretty good job of getting a lot of material off in a hurry. So here you can see the majority of the uh, of the shaping of the angle there is done. We're leaving a little thickness so you have you know some support, some strength behind that tip there. And uh, just looking at this pry bar for sale from Urban EDC Supply, the tip is angled down a little bit. And, you know that kind of gets a little more smaller, more fine, more maneuverable. You're not going to be prying on anything big. So we're going to work on shaping up the the side of that and angling out a little bit. Uh, so it makes it a little bit more more fine and uh, controllable. So I just want to point out the cool thing about steel is that around 200 degrees or you know some some when in under high heat, uh, the silver steel will start changing colors and it'll, uh, you can see some blue and some uh, orange uh, kind of reddish tints to that steel and uh, that's what it does when it starts getting under high heat. You can see that blue color kind of changing when the light hits it. So our next design is to cut a uh, bottle opener and I was looking at this one which is uh, also a DIY uh, pry bar. And it has this bottle opener that looked like it was a hole drilled and then uh, angle grinded out to be the rest of that shape. So here's our design uh, with a little, uh, you know, you're, you have your hole drilled right there and you kind of angle grind out the rest. And then it should work as a bottle opener. So this is a drill press. And as you can see, when you uh, turn this, the, the drill bit's in here spinning, it comes down. So you know, drill straight holes that are uh, pretty accurate. So this is the drill bit we're gonna be using. So you uh, stick it right up in here and tighten up on this. And you have this final tool that just lets you uh, get it in there tight. And there we go. So uh, you, you saw us drill the hole, you saw us take the hacksaw and open it up, and uh, you saw a little bit of the angle grinder kind of getting that angle out. So now we're just shaping it out a little bit with the uh, with the file to kind of uh, get it that more refined shape that uh, a bottle opener needs to kind of do its job a little bit better. So uh, now I've been filing on it for a little bit, I think we're going to take a look at it now and just see how far along this is coming. And uh, you know, it does get a little hot when you're filing on it. So you can see that's starting to take shape like a, uh, a bottle opener. 
might not be looking 100% perfect, but for something that will open a bottle, I do think this might work. So this is the files we were using. As you can see, they're, uh, they're square. They have sharp corners on them. So filing it kind of messed up our, our whole shape. So this is a round file. Let's see if I can kind of recover some of that roundness of the, uh, the base part of this uh, bottle opener here. So uh, we've whacked out you know, what we think is gonna work, but uh, we're not sure if it's gonna work or not. So here we have a uh, pop lid, and we're gonna see if this will actually work as a bottle opener. Here we go. It did work. It did work. So as you can see, I did. Uh, I was able to open the lid successfully, but it wasn't. It wasn't the most perfect thing. Uh, if you notice, you have to go at a really steep angle to bite into it, and then you can kind of pop it off. So we need to kind of mellow off that angle, and then it'll work good. But for right now, it's working, but just not perfectly. All right. So uh, as you saw, we've uh, finished reshaping the uh, bottle opener. We've kind of finished up the edges here and drilled a little hole for a lanyard. So we're gonna make sure this actually works and we're gonna crack open another bottle. So uh, here we go. Kinda choke up into it and you feel that it has pretty good lock up and just uh, press open your bottle and um, there you go, a perfectly opened bottle. We've now completed our little pry bar and it does successfully open a, a bottle so the bottle opener works and I think the little wedge on the end is, uh, we don't even need to test that because you know I, I think we know how a wedge works and how a little leverage works uh, even though you don't have much leverage. I, I, I think it's gonna work. So this is now going to go in my pocket and I'm going to carry it for a day and see if I use it even once. And uh, even to open a bottle, I had to go hunting through the house uh, to find anything that had a pop lid because uh, they're kind of going out of fashion here. So I don't think it's going to get much use. You're going to have to really go hunting down something just to open the bottle with here. But uh, yeah, this is going to go in my pocket and I'm going to go 24 hours and see if I use this thing even once. I'm calling it now. I think I'm not going to use it at all, but uh, comment down below if you think I will, and let's just see if I'm proven wrong. Here we go. So, I've just been speed cubing a little bit, and uh, I don't really like changing my cube. I think it's a little too tight, and you know, I was trying to pop off the center cap so I could tighten it up, and uh, it's real, the center caps are stuck on pretty good, and I ended up uh, kind of chipping one of my fingernails. So, I think we have finally found a use for the old pry bar. Uh, this is what you need if you're a speed cuber. I'm just gonna pop in one corner and go pow. There we go, there's the center cap. Look at that, I was proven wrong. We had one use with this pry bar in 24 hours. And uh, yeah, still not a very good track record. But hey, we used it once and uh, well, there you go. Pry bar. Now, to be fair, uh, the, the Rubik's Cube was a little bit of a joke, you know, because obviously this is not the, the greatest tool to be prizing on a, on a plastic Rubik's Cube with. But, uh, as it turns out, I have found an actual use for this, I think. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work or not, but we're going to try out. You know, we're just doing them testing. So, I was going out this door, you know, and uh, I noticed something. This screw on the uh, little plate here has backed out a little bit. You know, it's a little ledge. As you can see, it's, you know, poking out a little bit. So we're going to see if we can use this to tighten it up. So I don't know if it's going to work or not. It's not obviously made to be a screwdriver. But if it, if it does work, and it is working somewhat, look at that. We successfully tightened the screw. This is certainly not the greatest tool for the job. But it did work. I mean, wow. I'm, I'm, I am not amazed at all, but I am slightly impressed. Uh, we, we just tightened up a screw with a, with a prize bar that fits in your pocket. And it was quite horrible, but it did work. So hey, there you go. We had tightened a screw up. That was a flathead screw, which probably barely exists anymore in 2022. So uh, I went into this honestly not expecting much at all to come out of this little mini pocket EDC pry bar. And uh, I can honestly say it did deliver a little bit more than I expected. It does successfully open a bottle. Bottle. It did successfully prize the center cap off of the speed cube. And as I was most amazed about, not only did I find a use case, I found a slotted screw that had backed out. This was actually able to tighten it. I mean, how often is it that you find a, uh, a slotted screw uh, that needs tightening? Now, to be fair with you, I, I could have done that with the blade of a knife. I could have walked 10 feet and gotten a screwdriver that would have worked even better. But, hey, I was able to use this. It was sitting in my pocket. I didn't have to go anywhere. So it worked. I, I will say it worked. Uh, do I think it's useful? Not at all. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's useful. I mean, you can open a bottle cap, but bottle cap openers exist. Uh, you can tighten a screw, but screwdrivers exist. You can maybe prize on something, but if you're prizing on something this small, then get a knife blade or something. 
Uh, so it's not great. It, it's not something I haven't got to carry with me every day. I certainly don't think. But, I mean, hey, it works, and um, it, it looks cool. And looking cool is half the battle. So there you go. I have now made my own EDC pry bar. It took me about an hour and a half. It was a cool little project. Uh, it looks pretty cool. It does work. It functions. You can fit it in your pocket. And it made an interesting YouTube video that hopefully you gleaned a little bit from. And uh, if you're considering buying an EDC pry bar, I would recommend you don't. Uh, you can just grab you a chunk of steel and make you one. Or you can just throw a, um, a screwdriver and a bottle opener in your pocket and you'll already be far ahead of all the competition. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, share this video with your grandmother and all your EDC friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.